Hey hey, Apex Predator with you here, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 3. Today we are going to start off assembling some quarries. So if we hold W to ponder, we can see just exactly how they're supposed to be set up. So we'll place an item output hatch on either side, as well as the top of this controller. And holding a wrench kind of gives you the same idea as the ponder scene. And we can see we have a shape valid, status active. First quarry is set up. Now to the second one. Next we'll go ahead and make two more steel upgrades. That way we can upgrade these bronze boilers. So we just throw them right into the smithing table and they come out as steel boilers with a little bit faster of a production rate of steam. Come over to our first field depot here and maybe finish emptying it out. And that little mining trip gave us 64 blocks of lignite coal. This should power these steel boilers for quite some time in the future. And with a simple hookup right here, we should be able to see steam inside of the quarries. Oh my god, I used the wrong color fluid pipe this whole way. Wrench to connect. Which means we should see steam in here, but we do not. Why is that? Okay, I didn't fully finish you somehow. And next up, we're going to be cooking some more bronze. That way we can really get a cranking on some bronze drill heads. And a little while later, we have 64 bronze drills, which we're going to split half and half in between these two quarries. Now we just need to make sure we do item auto extraction on all of these hatches and it should auto output to all of the chests. Here in just a moment we can check its results and verify that we do indeed have some ore coming in. And in this mod pack these quarries are going to be an insane amount of resource generation for us. So we gotta make sure we keep these bad boys running at all times. All right, it has been a little while later and I've been doing some progress. I went ahead and did all the micro crafting of circuit components and even made a stack of these analog circuits, which will allow us to finally build the basic machine holes. However, before that, I would like to go ahead and complete these basic components quests consisting of the motor, pump, robot arm, piston, and conveyor. Now I should have everything already right here in my inventory to go ahead and complete these. And last but not least, the robot arm. Quest completed. That now gives us access to the large tank which leads me into our next project. I have dug out a next room in front of our minor room, and can anyone take a wild guess what this room will be for? Well, you might have guessed it. This is going to be our new steam room. I've got a large tank as you can see right there in the middle of the room, and we're just working on finishing setting up all these different boilers. And I figured I'd take you underground so you can see just exactly how this all is going to work. We have our fluid output hatch in the middle, fluid input hatch off to the side, and an item input hatch off to the left. Our fluid pipes we just have come down here into the center underneath the tank, where we have two water wheels spinning on a rotational speed controller, which then pumps water directly into the tank allowing us to extract it, so on and so forth. The steam, two boilers get fed into a hatch each, 
and that will fill up this tank hopefully in no time and as for the items right now we have a barrel full of lignite coal blocks and some modern dynamics pipes one with an extractor on the back this one we can put some upgrades in to help increase the speed at which the items will flow we have it currently set to redstone control on high signal but I might have to tweak this as we get started a redstone link here underneath which should activate that signal for the pipe and that is just being fed from this signal reading from the hatch itself underneath of that is a uh, large tank hatch that the redstone whatever this is threshold switch is reading its output or contents rather now all I should have left to do is patch these holes up in the floor finish building the boiler multi blocks and I currently have these back two boilers limited to a zero capacity meaning they will not get fed any of the lignite coal blocks just because I don't think we're really going to need all four of these running right now. The front side I have limited to just one block so it can have one currently burning and then one sitting in this slot. And I think all I really need to do is turn this on by setting the signal. Alright, and set this to receiving mode. And we can see the lignite coal blocks start to extract, though they move through this pipe system very, very slowly. We press U on this extractor. We can see the different type of upgrades that are supported and what their different effects do. Looks like all we really need to do is put a couple motors in here and it should greatly increase the speed. And it did indeed say max supported was five at a time. And we can see the steam cloud at the top of the tank slowly start to make its way down. And poor little Harold in here is just not going to have a good time. That's what you get for getting in my way all of the time. And looking inside the GUI, we can see the buffer slowly start to grow. I say slowly, it's actually relatively fast, especially for our progress in this world so far. Alright, I think the time has finally come to go ahead and build some basic machine holes, because I have a laundry list of machines that I want to get crafted. And that is our final quest here in the Steam Age chapter. Guess I could go ahead and claim these rewards. And we have finally unlocked the electric age. And our first couple machines will be three electric compressors, one cutting machine, and two assemblers. We'll come in here and claim the quests. And we'll start to get a little bit of a design. And I think lastly, we'll grab three steam turbines. We'll set them up right here underneath. And now we just need to connect them up to our steam network. Should see the steam turbines start to move. Indeed we do. Now we just need some cables and we should be able to attach all of our machines up to power. And every machine is now fully charged, ready for locking recipes. And just one at a time, we lock the inputs and outputs and adjust how much they can store. And now we just need to do our item pipes. And make sure we set everything to in and out blacklist. Lock all of our drawers. And begin the process. And I left out one step by accident. We need some of this lubricant. And that allows that one to fire up. Now we just need to decide what items we're going to allow into the drawer. 
Now we're going to end up using the same design concept for quite a few other materials like I have indentions in the wall already made out for. So once I have a little bit more of this set up, I will come right back at you guys and show you what I've been up to. Now I also forgot to mention while I was adventuring, I did sail through an ocean and end up getting some of these mermaids gems. This now has opened up the bush down below, so if I'd like I can go with the silk touch shears and grab one and we'll be able to have mermaids gems right here at our base. The next one is going to be under Enderman Secrets. This will need to go and find an Enderman carrying a cobblestone around. Um, is that a strider riding a strider? I think it is. I would think one of these guys would be holding a piece of cobblestone. However, I've looked at quite a few of them now and none of them seem to be. a sucker and a gas tier oh that's awesome here's one right here there we go the next part of the spectrum mod has been advanced and we can go ahead and now make the liquid crystal bucket and if I remember correctly what just hurt me? We are going to need to take a step into this bucket. Where is he? Oh, there you are. Like I was trying to say, we do need to take a step into the bucket to unlock the full advancement. And we have now unlocked the recipe for the Knowledge Gem. Which leads me to one of our next goals, the Enchanter. And now with the fully built structure, I should just be able to add in these liquid crystal buckets and she will be fully completed. And the ding signifies that. Right click. We now have the advancement. Now I just need to figure out what I need to do to unlock this exuberance enchantment book. One of my favorites. Hmm, okay, so then I wonder if I just duplicate a book one time, if that'll grant us access since we technically have done something with the enchanting altar then. So we'll place him inside the altar, we'll place the book that we want to duplicate on one of the bowls, and just place another book I think. No more giving these villagers our emeralds. For now. Okay, how much experience does this need? Alright, well I'm starting to think we don't have the ability to duplicate books yet. Maybe we need the potion workshop. And that would be a no. I gotta use a sunflower and some water to turn this to daytime. I can't do this. Or to take the rain away, not daytime. Now we can look for some shooting stars. I don't even think you have to have it zoomed in really. Okay, or not. I really get confused on how the spectrum progression really goes. Then again, I'm pretty sure that was a huge waste of experience because you can just do it to the tool without consuming the book. See, that was such a waste of experience trying to do it to a book. Well, it does appear that we're going to need Eyes of Ender to progress any further into Spectrum. And in order to do that, we need a chemical reactor, which is a bunch of aluminum. So what if...
done is gathered a bunch of bauxite that we have turned into blocks that we can exchange one for one inside this brand new EBF, which is what I'm going to do right now. Four fresh ingots right off the bat. Now we need this ratio to be a lot better, so the reason I made 26 of those blocks is so that we can make an electrolyzer. In the electrolyzer, we can turn our ratio from 9 to 1 into 10 to 4, whatever that maths out to, and also get a little bit of titanium and some oxygen as well. Now with these upgraded circuit board parts completed, we just need to finish building four circuits to make our electrolyzer. First is the large motor, then the large pump, which unfortunately did not trigger the quest. That should though. Oh wait, we need the circuit quest, okay. Oh my god, I just used the last one. I really did that to myself. Now we'll wait 10 more years on this EBF. Okay, boo-boo averted. Not really averted, but taken care of. There's our power of silicon advancement, as well as the two quests we needed completed. And I think that's all we needed to make our first electrolyzer. Now we'll come here and gather a whole bunch of bauxite that we can then process down into even more aluminum. And if I just put the ores in this drawer up top, everything should automatically start to process. And now we just need to set up our electrolyzer. And there we go. We now have a much better output of aluminum after we get the efficiency up a little bit more. Now, before I get too carried away, I am going to go ahead and end this episode here. I'd like to thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again in episode 4 of Static Industries. Bye now, guys. <laughs>